So we're going to talk about left main, uh, left main intervention. So I always like to illustrate these kind of lectures with, uh, uh, with a case. So this is a 74-year-old that was uh, referred to us from the west coast of Florida uh, with diabetes, all the, all the, all the comorbidities, one um, amputation in the left leg uh, and right heel extent, uh, lateral wall MI in the past with the previous PCI to the circumflex. She presented now with a non STEMI with EKG changes, positive troponins, um, certain degree of CKD with a GFR of 33. She had a small radial artery with, uh, with ultrasound and a 2.5 to 3 millimeter left radial artery. So the STS score was about uh, 4%. So this is uh, the ejection. Uh, you can see there the ejection fraction. So she's uh, very well preserved and she has kind of a small uh, cavity there. And this is the angiogram. As you can see here, there's a 1-1-1 Medina classification uh, lesion, plus there's additional disease in the LAD and in the proximal circumflex. The syntax score uh, was 29. We called the surgeon, and the surgeon said no. So we were faced uh, with doing this uh, case. and. Uh, we need to understand when we are talking about uh, left main uh, that uh, it's a little bit of a different animal. It's a large vessel, um, has a curved course, has an oval and an angled osteal uh, shape. Um, usually the lesions are not restricted to the left main but extend to the proximal uh, branching vessels. And then this angle will determine also the type of technique that we will use uh, for the case. And we cannot... Uh, when we have complex lesions, we just cannot just get away with one stent in many cases because uh, the circumflex uh, um, will supply large, uh, will subtend a large portion of myocardium. So the rules um, are slightly different. So we still have to, we still need to have a hard team discussion. We gotta come up with a stenting strategy depending on the location of the lesion. If it's in the ostium or the shaft, it's easy. Uh, if it's in the bifurcation, then we have to uh, use uh, the techniques um, or start thinking about the techniques that were discussed before. And, um, and then imaging is also critical in these cases, either via IVUS or OCT. And I also like, because I've been doing radials for a, a few years now, I always like to, to focus on, on access safety, but not only just by doing transradial, but also by doing best, uh, best practices in femoral access or now with axillary access if we need to use uh, uh, support. So this is a nice illustration on how the heart team discussions uh, should go and what would favor PCI versus what would favor cabbage. Um, so if uh, the patient is at high surgical risk or have serious comorbidities or it's urgent, maybe favors PCI. If there's low ejection fraction, diabetes, uh, need for concomitant cardiac surgery, then favors uh, cabbage. Uh, then if uh, the anatomical factors are favorable for PCI, uh, like osteal or shaft or isolated left main, so that's okay. Uh, if it's extensive uh, CAD with, uh, in the higher tertile of the syntax score, then we may favor cabbage. And then we have to, uh, we have to consider uh, some uh, of the preferences of the patients. So this is what the guidelines say. This is a nice illustration in this uh, Jack uh, Intervention Review published last year and shows that the Europeans are a little bit more liberal uh, with their uh, definition of, uh, of their indications uh, in patients with left main and they put uh, for the low syntax score uh, PCA at the same level of cabbage here in this side of the Atlantic. I think um, our guidelines committees are more conservative and uh, PCA just gets uh, uh, a class two indication. For a high syntax score, uh, PCA has a, a 3B uh, indication, so it's uh, not recommended, except for uh, patients who have a very high risk, like an STS of more than four, H more than 85, um, and severe comorbidities. So there was a recent publication in Lancet of a meta-analysis based on individual uh, patient data, and it shows that for left main disease, the outcomes at five years are uh, almost uh, are similar. 
Um, I won't say the word equivalent, but they are very, very, very similar. You can see that the curves overlap here, and then there's no interaction by the, extensive, the, the extent of disease uh, as measured by the syntax score, and there's also no interaction according to diabetes or no diabetes status. So we can use PCI, uh, we can use PCI, and we can have those uh, discussions with our patients and our and our heart team. Uh, but we don't want to forget that uh, PCI is associated with less stroke, MI, bleeding, renal failure, prolonged intubation, and arrhythmias, and those are all comorbidities that affect the patient and prolong hospital stay and affect their quality of life, even though the quality of life may catch up after one year uh, for the surgical uh, patients. Instead, in, in terms of how do you want to do the case, you want to select your best stent uh, uh, available in your shelves. So this is one example, the novel uh, trial versus the Excel trial. They use different stent technologies and the stent outcomes were quite different. So that's another, that's one thing to keep in mind. In terms of imaging, this is a, this is a very important rule. I would say that we, if we are going to do left main, we need to do imaging and interpret well the the we interpret well the pictures. This is a, this is a pool analysis of four registries in Spain uh, that shows that the outcomes are in terms of MACE are significantly improved in patients that uh, in whom um, intravascular ultrasound was uh, utilized. Uh, in the Excel trial, uh, IVUS was used in about 74% of the patient, and in half of them, uh, it changed. Uh, it changed what the doctors did. They used a lar larger balloon. They post dilated. They used higher pressure. They treated stent under expansion in certain cases, and that led to uh, a plan two uh, stent strategy rather than provisional one stent. This is an old paper now, but it shows what are the measurements that you need to achieve when you stent uh, the proximal left main, the polygon of confluence, the LAD, or the circumflex. And with uh, good expansion, the outcomes are very good, and when stents are underexpanded, the, the incidence of uh, instant restenosis is significantly higher, 24% uh, versus about 5% plus uh, with, uh, without underexpansion. In terms of malaposition and whether or not, because we obsess about covering, about covering the osseum, it's not that important to cover the osseum or to fully oppose. The only thing that you want to avoid is having an underexpanded stent. So that's, uh, that's, one, of the, one, of, that's one of the teachings that come from this uh, paper from Korea. In terms of the algorithm, so we want to make sure that we, you know, we we uh, we separate complex lesions versus the simple lesions. The simple lesions are going to be done with uh, the provisional uh, the provisional stenting strategy, in general. And then, if we have compromise with low FFR or less than TME three flow, then we can use uh, a bailout two stent strategy, like a tap technique or a culotte technique. Uh, the other use uh, for, for two stents, DK crush seems to be better than culotte, um, provisional stenting, and uh, in, in complex lesions, uh, always guided by, by imaging, that's the technique that should be used. The DK crush uh, 5 trial was uh, published uh, last year, and it shows that uh, all these patients benefit from the two stenting technique, but this technique is complicated. It involves about uh, nine, at least nine different steps, and you have to keep them in, in, in your mind. What I do is I just print them in a paper, and I have the tech where I just stick it to the, to the radiation protection so I can follow each one of the steps, and I don't, I don't forget while the fellows are talking to me. In this paper, it shows that either simple lesion or complex lesions did uh, a little bit better with, uh, with a DK crash, and there was no interaction. But uh, it seems that it's better to use it in the more complex lesions. What uh, was done in the Excel trial, Provisional stent was used in two-thirds of the cases, while plan two stents was used in about a third of the cases, and DK crash was not utilized because it may be, it may be proceeding or doctors that uh, the, the operators did not prefer not to do uh, DK crash because of the complexity. So going back to our case, this is a complex one, one, one um, bifurcation in the left main. Um, this is the abdominal orthogram. So there's an amputation in the in the left side. There's uh, there's significant disease in the right uh, side. So in this case, we decided to go with six French. 
This is a statement from the left main um, bifurcation club that everything can almost be done uh, via six French, uh, with a six French guiding catheter. And uh, there's little you cannot do with, uh, with, uh, with, with six French. The only thing you can't do is put an, a, a burr of more than 175 or two kissing stents except for the synergy. Uh, everything else can be done, even you can put a, a, a coated stent, a PTFE stent to cover in case of bifurcation. So in this case, we debulk the circumflex and the, and the LED. Uh, we use the circumflex because it was a little bit larger as our main branch. So this is um, how severely stenosis was the, the proximal circumflex after, um, after rod ablation. Um, then this is uh, post-rod ablation pictures. Then we did the initially uh, LED stenting. That was what we used as, um, then we, we crashed we uh, we crash the first uh, stent. Lots of steps. Uh, we use this, these are very useful papers. Uh, then we recrossed into the circumflex and um, we recrossed into the circumflex to do the first uh, kissing balloon. Here we're doing the first kissing balloon inflation with two, with two non-compliant balloons. Uh, then the side, the side branch wire is removed. Then we do the, the, the second stenting. Then we do proximal optimization technique just to facilitate wire crossing into the previously placed uh, stent. I know it's complicated. Then we go back again with the wire to recross into, in this case, into the circumflex. Second casing balloon inflation. Then we repot just to make sure that we have good extent of position and expansion in the proximal in the proximal side. And this is the final ibus, even though it's hard, sometimes you don't get to expand as much as you want because these vessels are really, uh, really hard and there's not much. I don't know if there's going to be a roll for a shock wave. But uh, we covered all the way up to the Austin. So these are the final, the final results. The patient did well. And the interesting thing is that I didn't mention what the access was, but in this case, it was my first uh, left distal TRA because the patient was uh, obese and ergonomically would have been hard to do it from left radial. So we used uh, the, the snuff box approach, and this is the... I'm sorry for the sound. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, this is, uh, <laughs> this is uh, the, the hemostasis, and it's very simple, and patients really like it. And the staff also likes this approach. So just to show, and I don't think it's that painful in that case. I mean, the patient had been whining throughout the case like that, so that put that additional stress That's easy for you case. to say, right? Huh? That's easy for you to say. Yeah. That, that's right. So anyway, so as conclusion, so you always want the heart team endorsement. Uh, you need your surgeon on your side. Use your best stent endorsed by data. Uh, there's lack of an available. We discussed this in this uh, session uh, for a dedicated bifurcation stent for the left main. Uh, you need to know the devices and the bifurcation <laughs> techniques. Uh, DK crush seems to be the preferred strategy. Always uh, image, and you always, always practice best. Uh, best access and, and safest access. Thank you. Any questions? Could you um, comment on this latest sub-analysis of the Excel trial looking at the, the incidence of late revascularization rates in mid-shaft versus distal left main disease? Are you familiar with that data? Have you I'm not that familiar with that data, but I'm sure that uh, I mean, it, it sort of marries nicely with our two talks about how the more complex the disease, the more likely they are to have events. Um, patients that had, uh, in, in the Excel trial, they did a sub-analysis looking at those late revascularization rates, and it's almost all tied to patients that had distal left main disease. Patients with mid-shaft and osteo left main disease, they did just well. They did just well. This as well. And then there's another, there's more data on, 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 the, on, the, on the residual uh, cross-sectional area, the smaller the cross-sectional area, the smaller the, cross, uh, the residual cross-sectional area, the worse the outcomes. So we need to use our best uh, strategies and, uh, and, and uh, achieve optimal image-guided uh, results.
I am, I am. And uh, we call the surgeons uh, usually. Um, sometimes you, you just try, to, you already have access, you already set up. If it's really simple, you call the surgeon. If the surgeon says, I want to have a discussion with this patient, we'll just take the patient off the table. If the surgeon looks at the case like in this uh, situation, well, in, we didn't do that. This was a staged uh, procedure anyway, the one that I just presented. But we try to keep, uh, and we have a special CAF conference to discuss these cases. Um, I think uh, I think we will still call the surgeons, and diabetes may factor into that decision, depending on the on the degree of LV dysfunction. But this is practice, is and not practice is not always married to hard evidence anyway. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.